Meine erste Begegnung mit einem Walhai hatte ich am ningalu riff in Australien. Das Tier strahlte eine unheimliche Ruhe aus. Ich war gebannt und hatte in den folgenden Monaten das Privileg, als Walhai-Guide diesen Tieren täglich zu begegnen. Meine nächste Begegnung mit Walhaien auf den Philippinen war wieder faszinierend und wurde gleichzeitig durch die Menge an Menschen getrübt, die dem Hai ganz nahe kommen wollten. Für mich war die Grenze zwischen Respekt vor dem Tier und der Möglichkeit der Begegnung klar überschritten. Walhaie gehören zu den stark bedrohten Tierarten auf der Erde. Sie werden unter anderem wegen ihrer Flossen gefischt, landen als Beifang in Netzen, sind Opfer von Bootsunfällen und leiden unter dem zunehmenden Tourismus. Gleichzeitig gibt der Tourismus den Tieren die nötige Aufmerksamkeit, um sie zu schützen. Doch wo ist die Balance? Auf die Gura, dem Hotspot des Walhai-Tourismus auf den Malediven, will ich weitere Antworten finden. Dafür treffe ich Chloe von der Organisation Maldives Whale Shark Research Program. Zusammen mit ihrer Kollegin Clara leitet sie eine Expedition, bei der sie mit Freiwilligen Daten über die Walhaie erheben. So what's special about Dagura is that it is located at the beginning of the MPA, South Ari Marine Protected Area. It's actually the biggest MPA in the Maldives. It is very special that Dagura is a part of the whale shark, this iconic animal. It is a very special and unique aggregation where we see them year round. So whale sharks have been around for millions of years. The hypothesis is that whale sharks are visiting South Island Marine Protected Area to thermoregulate, and normally we are seeing them cruising very slowly. So they are most likely feeding in deeper waters and coming up to recover from this deep diving. And in 2016, they received a more severe listing and they are currently endangered. The Maldives Whale Shark Research Program is monitoring the status and health of whale sharks in the Maldives, and we're also carrying out community outreach initiatives. First of all, we are collecting vessel information. So we write down the number of vessels we see along the reef. So name of the vessel, number of people on board, where it's from, activity. We are also collecting environmental variables. So wind speed, wind direction, current, temperature, uh, visibility, other megafauna that we're encountering along the reefs. And then this is allowing us to know the value this marine protected area has. So the, we would know visitation numbers, we would know the economical importance of the area. And then this will also help us to know if tourist numbers are going up and if there's any link to the decrease in whale shark sightings or for instance, injury. You know, with the help of our data and obviously local knowledge that there was an MPA declared in the first place, now we're hoping that there's going to be more protection for it soon um, and where we can, you know, pass these things over to policymakers and then create better policies for protecting whale sharks in the areas they inhabit. Seit ihrer Gründung arbeitet die Organisation mit den Menschen vor Ort eng zusammen. So entsteht Vertrauen und wirksame Lösungen können gemeinsam umgesetzt werden. Ahmed, der frühere Island Chief von Digora, erzählt mir von dieser Zusammenarbeit. When uh, started this uh, whale shark research program, before that we uh, don't know how important uh, to protect whale shark. So whale shark research program uh, gives uh, very good awareness programs and uh, I can say that luck for our communities. Actually, the challenges we face is that uh, the area, uh, Sampa region, is being protected uh, by the government. Sometimes uh, the tourists are very close and they need to touch the whale shark. Uh, they, they want to come first, like a race there. Uh, you have been seeing a lot of damages uh, of the whale shark, you know, attacks by the propellers of the uh, boats. Ahmed macht klar, wie wichtig es ist, die Walhaie zu schützen. Zurück an Bord erzählt mir Chloe, durch was die Tiere vor Ort bedroht sind. They need to come to the surface to thermoregulate and while this allows us to see them, this also means that they may be struck by vessels, there may be disturbance, they might not engage with their natural behaviors because there's too many people in the water. In 2020, we released two injury impact studies, which found the same thing, basically. So whereas in 2006, maybe 24% of the whale sharks were seen with injuries, in 2019, 
we actually saw 45%. It does correlate with a steep rise in the number of vessels. These injuries are lacerations, abrasions, and on occasions also amputations. So I was into that. Did you see the whale shark? I didn't. It was busy. Yeah. Um, it was a bit like a sort of whale shark circus. There's no way I would enjoy that. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see a whale shark, but it needs to be just on its terms, not on everyone else's terms. And so I just found it a bit sad. Ich frage mich, wie es früher war, was sich in den letzten Jahren verändert hat und wie die meisten Touristen das Erlebnis wahrnehmen. Die Antwort darauf bekomme ich von Nauschat, dem Besitzer der ersten Tauchbasis auf Ligura. Er hat die Entwicklung des Walheit-Tourismus seit Beginn an miterlebt. The number one attraction here is the whale shark. Every guest who visits the island, that's their number one priority. It's not good uh, how this whole place is managed. It's overcrowded, you know. So the number of uh, whale sharks with injuries are more. And now, most of the time, we see only like one or two sharks a day, and then it's 20 to 30 boats, and it's, it means like 200 to 300 guests on the surface, and you see like, it's, it's not safe for the whale shark or for the tourists who are in the water as well. At the end of these tours, everybody don't enjoy it, you know? First thing they can do is just stop the speed boats going in the area. I hope this place is managed because without whale sharks, people won't be attracted to these islands, to the tourism here. It will be a big change. So I, I do think personally that the longer an encounter is, the happier a guest will leave. But also, this will mean that the whale shark hasn't been forced to dive down to try and avoid this human impact. And this is amazing to see so many people like, you know, care for such an enigmatic species, an endangered species. Um, but sometimes the whale shark is becoming a bit of a, a victim of their own popularity. Zu dieser Beliebtheit trägt Social Media einen großen Teil bei. Und verantwortungsvoll angewendet kann es den Schutz und das richtige Verhalten fördern. Auf der anderen Seite kann die mediale Selbstdarstellung, für die die Haie auch ausgenutzt werden, zu schädlichem Verhalten gegenüber den Tieren und falschen Erwartungshaltungen der Touristen führen. Ich habe bezahlt, also will ich einen Walhai sehen. Was so läuft es nicht? Die Walhaie gehören nicht uns und wir müssen uns jedes Mal bewusst werden, dass diese Begegnungen ein Geschenk der Ozeane an uns sind. Letztendlich sind die schönsten Begegnungen in unserem Leben jene, die wir nicht kaufen, sondern die überraschend passieren. My wish for the future for whale sharks would be more effective policies made, more resources given to the, the governing bodies so that they can actually, you know, put these policies into practice, more funding given to young Maldivians so that they can have the opportunity to, to get involved with the research that's happening here. At the end, we are just visitors in this world. We do not own the Earth. Like there's there's other species too, and I feel like we could help to be the voice for those species who do not have a voice. <laughs>